Okay, so we're looking for the leak. Filled up the kitchen sink. We're letting it drain now, but that's because this basket strainer here is leaking like a sieve all over. So there's a fair chance that what might be happening is that it's just going down through the floor. Um, the odd part is that the leak is over here through the ceiling down below, which is kind of away from where the plumbing is because that goes over here, but the floor and everything is bellied down right here. So if that's leaking over here, the water could be just migrating down to the low point and then falling through the ceiling. So I'm going to say we'll replace that and then uh, once the tenant gets back and starts using things again, we'll see how it goes and hopefully that will solve the leak. Okay, so as you can see, here's where it was leaking through. Um, I already took the panel down. That was bad. It was kind of stained like that, had the hole through it. So that piece was garbage anyway and was probably going to have to be replaced. So I just opened it up hoping that there was maybe a trap there or something, but it did seem kind of like a long shot. Um, but again, everything's kind of pitched down to here. So um, in this room, we have the mechanicals. And as you can see, the, the kitchen pipe runs that, you know, the drainage for the kitchen runs that way. And it's probably just a straight shot through the bay there, down along the joists and then up. And that's, you know, as you can see, that's right there. And that's quite a good distance away from this hole but with everything being bellied if it was leaking over here it might be running down and then over and across there are a couple spots of staining right there and we're also bellied right here um, the only thing that's kind of strange is we got some staining right here too but the bathroom is way over here and I don't I haven't tested anything in there but uh, I don't know it seems like with the amount of water that was coming out of that kitchen sink, I'm, I'm going to start there and uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, here we are. I'm going to give you a kind of a unique view today because I don't have the tripod, so I'm using what I got. Um, so we got this. It's a pretty classic style um, basket strainer. Big nut. It's really hard to get any torque on there um, especially getting it off can be a real pain in the neck and there's just such a big surface area that it, it just takes way too much force to try and get a good solid fit um, you don't get a good basket out of it because it's not very deep um, I guess some guys like it because it's shallower but most of the time you know that's really not the issue you know because they're so big you can't get good torque on it so then they just loosen up and they just become a nightmare that is why i like to use this style basket strainer um I, I call it a chrome cup but uh it's a deep basket strainer um dearborn makes a pretty good one 15 bn um they got the nice cup uh, I'll show you in a second when I unpack it, but the nut on there is, is smaller so you can really crank it onto it and get a good tight fit. So here it is unpacked. Not only do you get a deeper basket out of it, a deeper basket compared to what's up there, um, the nut, the way it attaches this nut right here is smaller. So A, you can get a good uh, grip on it with the pliers and B, um, you can just get better torque on it to really compress everything up to the sink and make sure that this is not going to loosen up over time. It's just a much better system, in my opinion. All right. So let us spread our towel out a little bit better here. Take our trap apart. That's pretty crooked over there. Let me just double check that that's even. Wow, look at this. Thank you, Swartz. 
to spin this doesn't, oh wow look at that that's the other problem with these nuts is they're cheap white metal and they end up just splitting half the time um either that or they're so on there and so close you know that that's another issue is uh when these go bad sometimes you can't just cut them you know take them off you actually have to cut them but because they're right up to the sink it can be really difficult to get a cut on there without cutting the sink whereas the other one the nuts down way low so if you had to cut it you can just cut it and then everything comes apart all right we'll take this dishwasher discharge hose off we'll put that down hopefully it won't leak on us here That's not exactly the best drainage situation right there but hopefully that's not what's leaking See if we can't uh, get this thing off. It just wants to spin that whole nut. There we go. All right. Dishwasher tail piece is off. Take this gasket off. assembly out there. Put that to the side. Pick up some of our pieces here. And we'll take our towel and clean up clean up the face here so that we can get a good seal with the new one. So these ones come with a nice brass flange nut and flange gasket. And you just spin your set nut down. This comes off. And then when you set this in, you want to put the gasket on first. And this cardboard is essential. You don't want to just get rid of it because that allows, especially when you have that bigger nut, it's not so critical on this, but that allows the bell here to slip by and not catch on the gasket and potentially, you know, it would drag the gasket and could cause it to bunch up and just become a real problem. Grab some putty. Start bunching it up. Getting it all nice and mixed together. This also uh, softens it in the winter because it gets pretty hard in the winter. So the heat of your hands will warm it up, make it a little softer and easier to work with. And when you're ready, take the putty and you roll it out like Play-Doh. A nice log kind of a situation and you can just take it and you wrap it around just like so and you can take this and put it down Take your gasket, take your cardboard ring, take your chrome cup, container nut, spin it on, 
just tighten it down. They also come with a new uh, strainer. You can put that in. Now it's time to make up the trap. So I'll give them a new dishwasher tailpiece. Take your dope and dope up the face. Take your flange washer gasket there. And dope up that face as well. That can go right up and on. Just like so. And you can get your P track and everything ready. Stick this guy in just to see where we're at. Be able to go in a decent bit with him. Just clean this up a little bit so that hopefully it'll go in nice. These have been pretty tight as of recent. I'm not really sure why. To uh, do any trimming. Of course, it's going to want to pull it that way, but maybe I will just try and keep it like that. So that way there's not too much tension on it. We'll cut it right there. One nut on the other, put the, put the other nut on backwards, put our ferrule on. The sink is now filling, we want to fill it up pretty good because that will provide the greatest amount of head pressure that the drain should ever see. And if it doesn't leak under that load, then it shouldn't leak under any other load that it will see in normal use. And we should be good to go. Okay, so we're filling up here. Come down underneath, take a look. So far, so good. Everything seems pretty dry. Don't see anything yet. Of course, this is probably not under any pressure yet. It's all going to be up here because we have the stopper. And once we get the stopper out, then it will start draining and put pressure on the rest of this. But for right now, that looks good, which is exactly what we want. All right, we'll pull the, pull the plug on this. We'll leave the faucet running because if it can't drain with the faucet running, then there's definitely more issues here than just what was leaking. But um, we'll pull that and then we'll check for more leaks underneath. It looks like it's draining pretty good, pretty quickly. You can see that water level dropping right there, so that's pretty good. Come under here, come under here. No leaks there, no leaks here, no leaks here, here or there. There's nothing dripping off the bottom of the trap, which is the low point, and water would tend to find that and then drip off there. So far, so good. Sink is draining out nicely. It's almost drained out completely here. Let's 
last of it. Shut this off and take a look underneath. All right, we're under here. Final look. We're dry, 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 and dry. No leaks coming under here. I think we're all sealed up and good to go. We'll see if that leak in this repair solves the issue of water coming through the ceiling. All right, so if you got anything out of this video and you liked what you saw, please remember to leave a like down below. We're kind of working out of a pickup truck here today because, well, I'll show you. And here is why we're working out of a pickup truck. Yeah, that's not, not really a great looking tire there. I think it's time for a new one. Please comment, let me know what you think. And if you would, please subscribe so we can catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.